I mean, it's it in the be... nose. It's in the nose. Uh, oh, uh, just snot. Snot. That's right. So you have a mass that actually is blocking. So you this this most likely is mucus. Mucus. Yes. Okay. So you see how much information we already have mm -hmm. out of out of just the exploding. Let me just see more anterior. Okay. You see this doesn't look so bad. You can see, based that we know that it's extending all the way to the base of the skull, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now I'm going to do my angiogram. Okay, based on these images, what would be your protocol? What would, what what arteries would you angiogram and why? So the the area that is sitting is definitely supplied by ECA branches. It's external. We'll get more deep to that. Yes. Yeah. And it is in the middle, so you would be interested in both sides, because it might draw blood from both it sides. It crosses the midline, correct? Yeah. Here is the midline, right? Yeah. And it is also in the uh, uh, close to the sphenoid sinus that can uh, draw some of the uh, smaller collaterals from the ICA. From the character. As a matter of fact, you can see right here, right? But you have to be very careful that. What branches of the internal carotid artery would you say go in here? So it is uh, anterior, so you would think about uh, mandibular median. Mm, no, later on. Uh, mandibular median are down here. We'll okay. get, it, it turns out that angiofibromas frequently will have mandibular and, uh, and the median arteries, which are which regress. Their embryonic arteries, most of the time, they don't develop unless collaterals needs them unless demand, like a vascular tumor, needs it. But no, the inferior lateral trunk. Make, oh, yes, easy, yes. make it easier to yourself, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, right hand is usually right hand, and left hand is usually left hand. Yeah, there may be somebody who's got four fingers, okay? So so we already have a protocol in our mind. We're going to do bilateral carotids. We're going to do external carotid. Primarily, we're going to get to which branches of the external carotid actually will be involved. And notice, we haven't looked at an angiogram yet. So let's stay now on the external carotid artery, and we're going to stay. The left side is going to be dominant, but not always. Okay. So what what arteries will go to this nasopharyngeal area? Um, so it would be branches of IMAX. Internal maxillary. Yes. Uh, um, I want to say ascending. Pharyngeal yes, as well? yes, yes, of course, ascending. Although I'm Naso, I was nice to you. Yes. Nasopharyngeal tumor, ascending pharyngeal artery, right? Yes. And the ascending pharyngeal artery and the internal carotid artery are collaterals, are, are natural sources of balance. Let me take out something. Okay. Let's link this two. So here you have the first injection is the right, okay, the right external carotid artery. And we're going to try to identify all the branches, okay? So you have to, you know, always again think you're looking at a lateral view, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so you know that what is this artery? Uh, so that one is external carotid. That's the main trunk yep, main of the distal. Right, because the external carotid artery already we bypass the facial, the lingual, right? So it's more distal. What artery is this one? Occipital. It's occipital could be posterior auricular, okay? But yeah, because it's a little higher. Anyways, so here we have, uh, we see some branches here. You know what these branches may come up from? Uh, so that one. Uh, if you don't know, say I don't know. We, we, this is not the right view to see these things, okay? But you do see a little bit of what we want to see, which is the ascending pharyngeal. Oh, ascending pharyngeal, okay. Okay. And then uh, we have the shadow, and who is this one? This is ICA. And how did it feel? Uh, retrograde. Retrograde. You always have to differentiate retrograde than feeling through collateral circulation. Correct. Okay? Yeah. When it feels the collateral circulation is what dangers, reflux is you just inject too hard. Okay? Correct. And this is the best way to see it. You know, you go back. It's kind of... Okay? It, yeah. So remember, an angiogram is a dynamic process. Okay. Now we go in, and this, what artery is this one? 
So this is the uh, main trunk of IMAX? The internal maxillary main trunk. Okay, when we see the internal maxillary, what would be this branch? Uh, so it should be MMA. This would be, it's a, it's a variant of middle meningeal, yes. This is, this is the same one, right? Yep. And one good way, if I'm not sure that I see an artery, instead of going from proximal to distal, I go from distal backwards. Okay, so you go backwards, backwards, and actually, although this seems to be the middle meningeal, which it is, but the foramen spinosum is this one. And how do I know that? You see this sharp, sharp curve? Sharp turn, yeah, yeah. That's always when an artery enters the skull through a blood vessel. Mm -hmm. okay? Some little principles of anatomy and of radiography. You see this area here? Let me mag it. Oh no, sorry. This. Okay. Beautiful. If you look, you see this blood vessel here? And you see this blood vessel here, correct? Yes. Can you see the wall of both of them? Uh, yes. Okay. I can see the wall of this artery and this artery. What does it mean? M means that there are overlapping and there are different That means they're in different plane. planes. Yes. Okay, there's a thing in radiology called silhouette sign. Yes. Yeah. When you have an infiltrate in the chest and you want to know if it's the middle lobe or is the inferior lobe, if you can see the hard border is the inferior lobe, if you cannot see the hard border is the middle lobe because it touches the the heart. Correct, yes. We yeah. use that principle in angiography. Okay, so we use this principle and we can actually see, you see here, I can see the turn of this vessel and I can see the, I can follow, you know what I mean? Because it's going in this direction. Does it make sense? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know that this vessel originates because I don't have the border here. Right? Yeah. You see, right here, I don't see the border. And that was MMA. Yes. Let me take off this. Oh, how do I get rid of this? I always forget uh, this. Anyways, okay, so, so we see that. Now, as we look at the angiogram, we see in this location something different, right? And what is this? What is this? structure here? Uh, so it, it is um, a, um, a mass of a um, hypervascular. hypervascularity with right. the, okay. which anatomically matches the location of tumor. Well, don't, don't, don't worry too much. It's, it's this, this, this actually is the tumor. Tumor, yes. Right? And if we look at this that we had before, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking at part of this thing. And it's, here is in the lateral view, and we, we got to try to figure out how it feels. So, as we see this middle meningeal artery, we see something coming forward, okay? So, we have, this is the accessory, it's a nice variation of a middle meningeal artery. So, this is the accessory meningeal artery, uh -huh. and that gives us blood supply, and then we come here, we use the same principle, and this is how it's coming. So this is the distal internal sphenopalatine arteries, right? Yes. That come into this tumor, okay? So we see that. Now, this middle meningeal artery, always when I look at the middle meningeal artery, the very important area. Here is the convexity of the middle meningeal artery. Here is the concavity of the superficial temporal artery. In between these two is where the internal carotid artery would project. And if we see any anastomosis, you'll see them between these two. So if I see a branch coming here, maybe the other side will have it, okay? So this is my territories that I look. The next area is I look at the orbit. And I have a maningro lacrimal artery, you see this one? It's going to the orbit. Correct. You see, and that's important. And right here is exactly where the lacrimal gland is. The lacrimal gland is lateral. Okay, and if we were to go to the uh, plain film, it probably has a hurdle foramen. 
where it enters the orbit. Hello, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's an interesting variation of the middle meningeal artery. Yeah, okay? <laughs> so you got to be careful that this can connect to the ophthalmic. We're going to leave this. We're going to now look at our next injection. What would be your next injection? What's wrong with you? Uh, so you, we would naturally now switch to the uh, intracranial circulation. Now you would do the internal carotid. I'm going to put the lateral only here. Uh, and sorry, uh, the sphenoid branch of MMA is different from uh, lacrimal, or is this? The lacrimal is a branch of the middle meningeal artery. And meningolacrimal is important because it frequently fills the ophthalmic. Yeah. So whenever you see this, let me break the link. It's different from meningophthalmic. Well, don't get into semantics. It's the, you, you see, what I did is, I know the orbit is here. So what I did, I follow my middle meningia, and this type of curve tells me this is meningolacrimal. The, the more dangerous is the one that turns around like this and fills the ophthalmic. And then we can take the, the the book, okay? But this is the least dangerous, and this is this configuration tells me that. And all I see here is the lacrimal gland. In the AP, that was nice because I need to see that it's lateral. So here is the artery, okay? You see? Actually, this will not have a hurdle canal. That is a very small one. But you see, the lacrimal gland. It, this is the orbit. Agree? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. And that's a lacrimal blush. So this is, and this is the lacrimal gland. Right there, you see it? Yes. So we know, that, but if I'm gonna put liquid embolic or whatever, I may put a little coil here to make sure that nothing goes beyond it. The, the, we'll see that the real dangerous, that's a curve like that, but then the ophthalmic artery comes from it. Okay, so we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna go back to the internal carotid. Let's see, and, the, and now we're gonna look at the Internal carotid artery. This is a young kid, right? Is very young, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you can see funny the carotid. Uh, this probably is a flow phenomena more than uh, there's no atherosclerosis here, okay? And then when you look at this uh, injection, I don't see any of the branches from the inferior lateral trunk going to the tumor in the right side. Remember that we're going to be suspicious the left side. We can predict that most likely the left internal carotid will supply this tumor. That we did from the MR, right? That's correct, yes. We'll see, we'll see if it's true now. Okay, yeah, so I think that I see a little something here. What is this? Uh, this is the retinal blush. Yes, very important. And how did the retinal blush feels? This is the ophthalmic artery. See how it comes up like that? Turn around like this. Do you know what this means? This uh, probably means the ophthalmic canal. No, it goes above, it goes under the optic nerve. I see. To go. So I when, see. if you're looking for the optic nerve or the meningioma of the optic sheath, you you some of the blood supply will come from this area. So this curve is how the ophthalmic goes above and that goes under the optic the optic nerve. And then there's this very small artery. The central retinal. Which. So that's this area. Something that you can also look is at the late venous phase but mostly on the left side to see if there's any problem with the cavernous sinus. Okay, but I don't see anything here. Okay, it's been a paraffin vein. So let's go forward with the left side. Okay, so here is again, what injection is this? Uh, it is a ECA injection. Distal external. I, I, t I try to make the differentiation that I don't have the facial lingual trunk. Okay? Yeah. And that, that helps too. Okay, so now we see something a little bit different, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so you see the same anatomy of the how it turns around, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at this. I'm, I'm not going to go to the tumor. I'm going to, I'm looking at my middle machine. It's the same variation. Okay, coming like this. This probably is lacrimal too. Okay, there it is. Here's the lacrimal gland also. But this, remember I told you that when it got, turns and gives a curve like yep, that? Exactly. It's it more dangerous. That. And that's what this one is doing. I see. And this one definitely will anastomose with the ophthalmic artery. This is a much more dangerous artery, okay? So let's say we're going to decide to, okay, we'll get to that. 
but let's say we can embolize this with a liquid embody. One good caution would be to go here, put a little coil here. You know, to just keep it protected. So if I inject liquid embolic, if I'm going to use uh, uh, onyx or any shit like that, it doesn't go there. Okay? But you can see how this, this tumor looks like the MR that we had, right? Absolutely. It has this heterogeneous appearance, right? Mm -hmm. It is well circumscribed. Wow, look at this venous structure. Is, so it, is it uh, aneurysm or venous structure? Selectasia of some type. There's no AV shunting, so it's in the arterial side. Look, it's in the arterial side. I mean, is this tumor, is in the tumor bed? Uh, but it says this is in the, I mean, the arterial side. Here it is, right? This is not a fistula. You know, so I would say that this is an aneurysm in the arterial side. I don't remember seeing some that violent. Okay, and then what is this thing here? And that goes towards orbit. So orbit, good. See, see how it helps. You good the orbit. What phase of the angiogram is it? It is in the uh, early venous phase. In the venous phase. So what veins do you have? Um, in the, as a matter of fact. So this is the ophthalmic vein. You know, so cavernous sinus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, towards the ophthalmic venous system. Okay, let's see if you did more selective. This is a, a, an aggressive tumor. This is it's, it's benign, but it does look quite aggressive. Uh, if this were to tie to turn out to be a uh, a uh, what you might call it, um, a very aggressive uh, angio angio a uh, very vascular meningioma. What's the name? You don't have you don't know the pathology yet on this. Uh, I'm sure they have the pathology. I did, just didn't uh, check it because check this it, is yeah. reportable. If they have. I don't remember seeing this kind of stuff. This may be not an angiofibroma. Do you know how to get into Epic? Uh, I, I do, yes. When did they operate in this thing? Now, where is the... Uh, here's the left internal carotid artery. Okay, so here's the median, okay? Yes. And the tumors, tumors produce that. And this is another one. ILT? It's a little bit part of the ILT, yes, but it's going to the posture to the to where the uh, clivus is. Oh, so you think it's part of MHT? Mm -hmm. Now, I would definitely have done a selective ascending pharyngeal in this case. I think we did it later. Okay, okay. nice case, very fascinating. Okay, and here we don't have such a good PCOM in this side. We do have an ACOM. See how the acom looks. Yeah, small acom, right? Yes, absolutely. Look how beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mandibular median. Mandibular artery. Okay, so you went to embolize already. Actually, it's a semi-parija. This is the semi-parija. No, this is the sphenopalatine, okay? So here you be careful, you know. So I think that you guys... So what happened here is that you already have a little bit of contrast material because you have a wedge catheter. You understand why? Um, you see, I see. Oh, this. it's blocking the flow. It's blocking the flow. Okay. So when you get your mask, it erases that portion. Okay. Okay. So you are here. Okay. It's this one. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is in the distal. And then we have to. What is this one? Uh, so. This one. Can you see it? Can you see it there? That's why I put this one here. Can you see that artery there? It looks big, so I would say it's STA. It's, it's this one. Oh. It's the Okay, okay. Okay? 
and it feel so he's very selective here. We need to understand if there is an anastomosis or there's reflux. Okay, I think there's there's some reflux here. Okay, but it's all tumor. Mm -hmm. So let's see what you did here. Okay, so he oh he put a balloon? What is, am I seeing a balloon here? Uh, yes. Do you know what you do? You know what uh, what the lazy did here? Uh, I, I think. Onyx. Yeah, it was onyx. Yes, onyx. it was onyx. Wait, so yeah, but he's, he's he's injecting the conch, he's inflating the balloon. So this is a scepter. That's a scepter. Yeah, it looks like scepter. Yeah. So he wants to see what's left. I guess mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to see. And you see a little bit better IRT. And what is this? You know, you know what it is because you saw it before. Mm -hmm. Remember we saw the mandibular? Oh yeah, we did mandibular. Okay. So okay. Part of it too, man. This scepter balloon has made a big difference in what you can accomplish with this tumor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's not too much of a cast here. Just for flow rest? Well he's got the balloon here. So, so he's, okay. he's feeling that, okay, here, right, this one, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what this artery is and why it's important to know? Uh, now, this is the infraorbital. Here's the maxillary sinus. This is the base of the orbit. Uh -huh. Infraorbital. And this, right this point, remember we told we this, got these acute curves? Mm -hmm. Here is where the infraorbital foramen right here is. So this will be an anastomosis with the fascia. This will be an anastomosis with the eyelid to the superficial temporal because mm -hmm. it's gone out of bone. And in here, there may be a small artery here to the inferior rectus muscle. And that could be another potential to get problems into the orbit. Again, reflux. Uh, okay. So here you see, okay. So this, sometimes this thing will anastomose with that, okay? Mm -hmm. And then this superficial temporal. Okay, now remember what we said about the concavity of the superficial temporal and convexity of the middle meningeal. This is where all the troubles happen, okay? Yeah. yeah. So let's see. Didn't penetrate that much. Mm -hmm. Let's devascularize it. Okay. So inject it a little more. <coughs> okay. The balloon is still inflated. This because they, they, they cut this now. Now you're starting to see mm -hmm. the anastomosis. They will go up. But it's, it's cut off. Do you have the the uh, original not the, not non selective? The what? Do you have the non subtractive view of that? This one. Onyx cast and the lateral. Yeah. Right. And it's different from the infraorbital. Oh, the one cast it. This yeah, one yeah, is not the infraorbital is still patent. Here it is. Mm -hmm. This is the infraorbital, right? Yeah. But now you see it an anastomosis with mm -hmm. sort of what's <coughs> nice. so I guess here. <coughs> so this is after he deflated the balloon and he well, okay, look. There's the inferior lateral trunk. Whatever you didn't get with the onyx, now it is picked up. And there is a little bit more from the mandibular. It's a good embolization, just spray up. You call it Vidian artery, that <coughs> small one. We did. I'm trying to remember the one that follows, you know, uh, down. 
That's my book. Which one is that? Well, mm. this one. It's not Otic. No, no, no. That's, I have to remember. <laughs> it doesn't go posteriorly to be what's called tim tim uh, cortico cortito tympanic. No, no, don't don't, don't get too confused. <laughs> with things. We'll 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 strain that. I'm out. I'm clearly showing off, Doctor Berenice. Yeah. Okay. Here's the semipharyngeal now. You see, but this is okay. This is an important variant. You have a common trunk. This is called pharyngo occipital trunk. Common trunk. And here you have the ascending pharyngeal, and here you have the occipital. Only one. Okay, so. Okay. No. God, I haven't opened this book in so long. <laughs> So let's go into the mandibular, right? They all are in the same place. In this determination, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mandibular artery, 204, 205. That in book index is the old version of Control F. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take out that there's any range of artery. Uh, the mandibular arteries, straight in there. Uh, and curved. There we see on both injections. The there's a bunch of motions also. System. Uh, okay, so this is the one that uh, goes, you see the uh, internal carotid, and it's following. God, I have to reread this thing. <laughs> okay, these drawings are very good this, uh, to help you. You know, things, if you don't use them, mm -hmm. you forget them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's uh, exactly what is no. there. Well, not quite exactly, but I want to see it from the internal carot. See, this goes like that. Mm -hmm. Ours is coming. Let's go in the, this one. You should do it before the embolization. Because the ascending pharyngeal artery and the mandibular artery. It's the mandibular artery, this one. Hmm. I've never heard of a mandibular see. artery coming off from the IC. From the internal carotid? Yeah. No, but I, I, I'm trying to see if the mandibular, the pterygovaginal artery, uh, okay, if you're the mandibular meningeal branch, but this is, this is the ascending So mandibular is different from mandibular median, right? Is it the like persistent median artery or like it's far away from mandible? Why do you call it mandible artery? Because no, but that's embryonic name. I see. Mm. It's it's an embryonic name, uh, Tomoyoshi. It's a median artery. Uh, mm. mm. Origin, branch media canal, metastatic 